Ever wondered how a gold pan works? No, it's not a cooking utensil for golden pancakes. You see, gold panning is an age-old practice that dates back to the great gold rushes of the 1800s. Folks back then, just like us today, were fascinated by the allure of gold, that precious shiny metal that could turn a pauper into a prince. But it's not just about the glint and glitter. Gold panning taps into some fascinating scientific principles like specific gravity that separate the goodies from the grit. And even today in our world of high-tech gadgets and machines, gold panning holds its relevance. It's a simple, low-cost method that's accessible to anyone, anywhere. It connects us to our history, our planet, and yes, to the thrill of finding our very own pot of gold. Now that's enough chit-chat. Let's dive into the real deal. So you might be wondering, what's the science behind this gold panning? Well, the answer lies in a principle known as specific gravity. Now, don't get your pants in a twist. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Specific gravity is essentially a fancy term that scientists use to talk about how heavy something is compared to an equal volume of water. For example, if we take a cubic inch of gold and a cubic inch of water, the gold is going to be about 19 times heavier. In fact, gold is one of the densest elements we know of, and that's what makes it perfect for panning. You see, when you swirl your pan filled with river sediment and water, the lighter materials get swept up in the water and are carried off while our heavy friend gold sinks to the bottom. This is because of another scientific principle called gravity. Gravity pulls everything towards the center of the earth and the heavier something is, the harder gravity pulls. Now imagine you're at a dance party. The music is loud, everyone is moving and shaking. The lighter folks, they're bouncing around, floating from one side of the room to the other. But the heavyweights, they're more likely to stay put, right in the center of the action. That's kind of how it is in your gold pan. The gold, being the heavyweight, doesn't get carried away with the hustle and bustle. It stays at the bottom, waiting for you to discover it. So in essence, gold panning is a simple process of using water to separate the lighter materials from the heavier gold. But remember, it's not just about the technique, it's also about understanding the science behind it. And now that you know about specific gravity and how it works, you're one step closer to striking it rich. So it's all about using gravity to our advantage, folks. Now let's get to know our tool, the gold pan. This humble item often overlooked is the backbone of every gold prospector's toolkit. Picture a shallow dish, about 15 inches in diameter. Its color? usually black or blue, designed to contrast with the gleam of gold. It's made from a tough, lightweight material such as plastic or metal, built to withstand the rigors of the wild. The pan boasts a flat base, perfect for sifting through sediment, and steep ridged sides to trap the precious metal. These ridges, or riffles as they're known, are the secret to the pan's success. When swirled correctly, they use the principle of specific gravity to separate the gold from lighter materials. The gold pan might seem like a simple tool, but its design is the result of centuries of trial and error, a testament to the ingenuity of prospectors past. Remember, the gold pan is your best friend in this endeavor. All right, let's roll up our sleeves and get to the nitty gritty of gold panning. First things first, you've got to scout for the right location. Gold, being a heavy metal, tends to settle at low points in streams and rivers or where the water slows down. So, look for places where the river bends or slows, or perhaps where large boulders have created natural traps for gold to settle. Now, once you've found your potential gold hotspot, it's time to fill your pan with sediment. But here's a pro tip. Don't just scoop up any old dirt. You want to go for the pay dirt. That's the material just above the bedrock. It's a bit of a gamble, but that's where gold is most likely to be found. Next, you'll want to submerge your pan in the water. Make sure it's filled to the top and give it a good shake. This isn't some delicate dance. You've got to really jostle things around. The goal here is to allow the gold, which is heavier, to sink to the bottom while the lighter materials rise to the top. Now comes the washing stage. With the pan still submerged, start to gently swirl the water around in a circular motion. This helps to separate the heavier gold from the lighter materials. Gradually, you can start to tilt your pan and let the water carry away the top layer of lighter material. 
but be careful not to tilt it too much or you might lose some of that precious gold. Once you've washed away most of the lighter material, it's time for the final reveal. Tilt your pan back, allowing the water to gently move over the remaining sediment. As the water washes over the sediment, the heavier gold, if there is any, will start to appear at the edge of the pan. You might be tempted to jump for joy at the sight of gold, but hold your horses. It's essential to carefully remove the gold particles from your pan. Use tweezers or a snuffer bottle to collect the gold, ensuring you don't accidentally flick it out of the pan. At this point, you might be wondering, how do I know it's gold and not just some shiny rock? Well, true gold has a distinct yellow color, not the glittery gold you see in jewelry stores. It's also malleable, meaning it can be flattened without breaking. So, if you're unsure, give it a gentle press with your tweezers. If it flattens, you've struck gold. And voila! If you're lucky, you'll be gazing at some shiny gold particles. Now, we've all had our share of blunders, haven't we? Here are some common mistakes in gold panning. First off, many folks start with a pan that's just too full. You see, a pan brimming with dirt and gravel leaves little room for the necessary shaking and swirling that separates the gold from the rest. So, always remember, less is more when it comes to filling your pan. Next, some enthusiasts are a tad too vigorous with their panning motion, causing precious nuggets to escape their grasp. Gold panning is not a race, friends. It's a slow and steady process that requires patience and finesse. So slow down, take a deep breath, and let gravity do its thing. Another common misstep is not classifying the material. Now, I know it's tempting to dump everything into your pan and hope for the best, but screening out larger rocks first can save you time and effort. Plus, it makes it easier to spot those shiny specks. Lastly, it's easy to get disheartened when you don't strike gold immediately. But remember, gold panning is as much about the experience as it is about the potential payoff. So, don't let a dry spell dampen your spirits. Remember, practice makes perfect. Don't let a few mistakes discourage you. After all, every seasoned prospector was once a beginner too. So keep at it, and who knows, you might just strike it rich. Well, folks, that's a wrap on the basics of gold panning. We've journeyed through the science, the tools and the technique, all the way to the common pitfalls. Remember, it's all about understanding specific gravity. That handy principle that gold, being about 19 times heavier than water, will sink to the bottom of your pan faster than the lighter materials. And let's not forget about our trusty gold pan. Simple, yet effective, its ridges or riffles are designed to trap the gold as you swirl water to wash away the lighter materials. The pan, your patience, and your persistence, those are your best allies on this golden adventure. We've also walked through the step-by-step -step process. How to fill your pan with soil and gravel from a promising spot. How to submerge it in water and give it a good shake to let the gold settle at the bottom and then the gentle swirling to wash away the lighter materials, leaving, hopefully, those beautiful gold flecks sparkling at the bottom of your pan. But remember, it's not always about striking it rich on your first try. It's about the thrill of the hunt, the joy of being out in nature, and the satisfaction of mastering a skill that's as old as time. So are you ready to strike gold? Remember, every prospector was once a beginner. Happy panning!